I'm here with Frauke Tillmans. She's the research director for DAN, and I was hoping we could talk to her a little about decompression sickness like uh, and research. Um, starting out, I understand that 94% of uh, incidents of decompression sickness occur within tables or computers. Uh, what's with that? Yeah, what's with that? Um, it's true. Most of the, the incidents that are reported to DAN are really dives that, that are, we don't say undeserved, because in the end you're going in, in unfriendly air, you're going in the water and it's not made for you, but um, still, you are, you're following all the rules, you're sticking to the tables, you're sticking to your computer, and people still get bent. What that tells us is that this is highly individual, <laughs> and that the average diver is not the person that the tables were made for. So the tables were, were originally made for military divers. And when you look around when you set up your gear, you don't see many people that look like military divers around you. And that again is, um, is now we need to see how does that affect the, the normal divers. Mm -hmm. So we also don't make square profiles normally. Right. So the reef isn't square, the wreck might be. But then that is the only thing where the tables would, would actually come into play. Gotcha. So what we have now is a, it are, are multiple dives where divers produce bubbles, but you never know, you, you can't say from the dive that they do or from the person who is doing it how many bubbles they will have. Mm. So it's very individual. You might have a completely different bubble score than me, and for example, I do an unprovocative dive. I go to 30 meters for 20 minutes, and or for or to, to, to yeah, and and I bubble like champagne, huh. and you might be tap water, so completely flat. We we don't know, and what adds to that is it, t tomorrow that might all be different. Huh. So we have individual uh, susceptibility within our within our individual self. On one day, I could be more bent prone than another day is what you're saying yeah you say bent prone and that is that is difficult because yeah. just having bubbles doesn't cut it having bubbles you have a higher risk the more bubbles you have the higher the risk we have understood that and we believe all that uh -huh. now someone with only two bubbles might get bent and someone with with champagne in their right heart might not and now figure it out what, what, so what because their system is filtering it from the venous side to the arterial That is side? one part. So hmm. you need to have bubbles to cause DCS, but then you also need to have a shunting mechanism. Hmm. So shunting from the right to the left side, so from the left side to go into the arterial system, is going to be you either need to have a PFO right. or you have right. to have a lung shunt that opens easily. Mm -hmm. And both we can't really mitigate and we usually don't test for it. And it wouldn't make much sense to test for it either. Mm. Mm. So. I've been reading a lot uh, recently on just uh, individual susceptibility. Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, Where's the research on that? Like tying those algorithms to me as an individual or you as an individual? Are we, have we made advancements there? Is there research? Well, on, on the algorithms itself, not really. There are... Um, there are companies and institutions out there that try to tie uh, the gradient factors or the algorithms to an actual Doppler count or Doppler grading, but um, we are not there yet. It's just just not happening. What you can do is you look you can look after yourself and, and see. Okay, if I'm more prone to bubbles, we've I've I've seen it. Then I can try to mitigate that. And a lot of of research has focused on preconditioning. Preconditioning pre means that you do something before the dive that will impact your bubble load after the dive. Mm. So, for example, hydrate well. So there is something like hyperhydration that you really don't want, and uh -huh. there is dehydration that you don't want. Right. So you need to find your own personal good balance to feel good and to also mitigate bubble risk. Mm. Um, Sauna is a good good thing that has been tested. So sauna seems to work. Having taking having taking, a sauna. Having a sauna before just the one, dive? before only before. Only before. Not only after, before. Yeah. Now there there are a lot of very interesting, but also sometimes a bit crazy studies, huh. um, mainly from the European colleagues that have been working on huh. that. 
preconditioning and Dan Europe that has been working? Well, I remember uh, hearing a talk by Alessandro Moroni, who is the uh, founder of uh, Dan Europe, and he was talking about his, his vision of having uh, sensors on divers to be able to measure their condition during the dive with the idea of that maybe this could feed back into that is decompression. Is that, is that like sci-fi or is that, are we close to that? Or? We, we are getting closer with every wearable device that is out there. So we have smart shirts, we have uh, rings. This, for example, is a ring that tracks my sleep and my activity and all that. That can be worn underwater. The question is, is, is the signal good enough to actually pick up everything that is happening underwater? Mm -hmm. But the idea would be to have a complete measurement system of the person, including when do bubbles start to grow? When, when do we actually see them first? Is it while coming up? Is it just happening once you exit the water? Is it how long are they staying? Mm -hmm. So this is all things that, that if we could automate that, that, those measurements, that would be fantastic. Oh. I have, yeah, I have a, a few friends, actually some GUE friends who go, ah, oh, I avoid that kind of diving because, uh, right, I'm, I'm, I'm prone to this. So hopefully some of this research will, um, uh, will help us determine that going forward. Well, I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> they, they just hired me for that. Oh, so, good, yeah. good. Well, I'm sure they're going to do well <laughs> under your uh, leadership on that. Thank you. Thank you.